You don't need too many men in your life, but you need a few strategic ones. Let me list four of them for you very quickly. Number one, you need divine connectors. Divine connectors are not powerful people. They just know who is powerful. Divine connectors are like the slave girl. The slave girl that was with, Nam, um, with Naaman. Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war, but that could not cure him of his leprosy. The entire journey that would lead him to Elisha came as a result of the counsel of a young maid who attended to his wife. Divine connectors do not have the form and the fashion to be desired. It takes humility and discernment. Your divine connector can be, as we call it in Nigeria, a bus conductor. Your divine connector can be someone, your cab driver. You order an Uber or a Bolt and someone can be in that car listening to a man of God's message. And your 20 minutes journey can be the beginning of knowing the grace that will help you. Divine connectors are powerful. That is why if you only respect great people, you will be in trouble. Because great people are enhanced and helped by supposedly average people. When you see an office looking clean, it's not the CEO that cleaned it. There was someone who cleaned it and put things in place. And that someone who cleaned it can choose to pull away your file. And that's the end of it. As small as he is, he can stop a CEO from getting a contract. Respect great people, but honor small people. Just for sake of description. Hallelujah. There are people who only respect those who are rich, anointed, and great. Anybody who is your contemporary or below you, you can kick them while you are honoring others. It's hypocrisy. The Bible says, honor all men. And it says, honor the king. So you can see a little baby, can even be your daughter, playing all the time. And one day she'll say, mommy, let's go to church. That was the Holy Ghost speaking. Because something would happen in church that day that will redefine your life. Your gate man. All the time can watch you and you say, how are you, sir? But one day he'll say, sir, this is your sickness. There's a man of God I know. I don't know if you can talk to him. And that can be your connection point. Someone can be passing a flyer randomly and pass the flyer of a seminar that you may just collect, but that can be the answer to your prayer. The key to walking with divine connectors is discernment. Always discern. As weak as they may look, Number two, men of influence. The second group of men that you need in your life are men of influence. Men of influence are men of timber and caliber. Through their sacrifices and for most of them, the dignity of kingdom integrity interplaying the laws of the kingdom and the laws of success have arisen to a point of notoriety and influence. Their endorsement, their referral, their recommendation to your life can redefine your possibilities. Hallelujah. The wine presser had a dream. Joseph interpreted it. There was no reward. The baker had a dream. Joseph interpreted it. There was no reward. But when the king had a dream, as soon as Joseph interpreted it, he became prime minister. Three men had dreams. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. The problem was the status of the dreamers. Ah, when you interpret a king's dream, you don't remain in the prison again. So when God wants to lift you, he will not just send dreamers. He will send kings who are dreamers. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He interpreted the dream of the baker. But when he stood before the king, when the king was done talking, he said, Oh king, it's not about cows and it's not about plants. It's about the law of season. Something that will befall the earth. It has happened twice to me it is established. And he spoke to the king. And look at his diplomacy. Let a king find a man so discreet and wise. In other words, king, I dare you, search round if you will find a man like this. Are we together? When you serve kings, you never serve from the prison. They have the power to bring you out of the prison. The Bible says, and the king sent for him and they brought him out of his dungeon. 
There are people who are shouting and praying, Lord, bless this family. Take us out of shame and reproach. And one man in Ghana who even loves God can sign something for you. And that would be it. Oh, the door of admission is closed. That is a relative statement. It depends on who is speaking. Let me tell you the truth. Law and order at every level and leadership and access and influence at every level is relative. If it takes men to write it, men can change it under certain conditions. Not every condition. You need men of influence, so you do. You do. They are gatekeepers. One person can come to you and look at you and endorse you and bring you to a place where you are lifted and elevated. Now, politicians know this, even though many of them do it in a very bad way, unfortunately. But most of them understand the power of relationships. You may have heard it in my teaching. Why will a billionaire or a millionaire travel across kilometers to come and celebrate the birthday of a rich man's two-year-old son? Is he his mate? Why did he arrive there? I mean, come on, please. A man that told you you've been trying to get in touch with him, he's told you, I am busy. Yet you are watching TV and you are finding him. And then a television station is recording the birthday with all the adverts waiting online. They are recording the birthday of a two-year-old child playing around and pouring drink on the ground and you see very noble men nodding. Did they really come for the birthday? <laughs> I'm not saying to go and run around the corridors of psychophants and people who are godless. There is order and we do it with discernment and caution. But by all means, you better begin to thank God when noble people come into your life. Even as a pastor, don't get into the pride of telling everyone, I don't care anybody. God brings a noble person, one like Joseph of Arimathea, and we throw them away and say it does not matter. They leave you with your frustration and go. They are the ones... And you find out that people are praying. Your answer comes to you and you do not know. You know they were praying for Peter to come out of the prison. In Acts chapter 12. When Peter came out of the prison and went to where believers were praying. They opened the door and saw him and closed it back. They said no it is his angel. This is the guy they were praying about. And yet he had come as an answer. And they closed the door again. They said let's keep praying. Most believers keep praying but when their answers come. They come in men and they do not know. The moment you start praying, start discerning the men who are coming. Because answers come embodied in men. Sit down, let's finish up. So number one, divine connectors. Two men of influence. Number three, gifted men. I was watching your media recap of my teaching yesterday and I just whispered to the bishop. I said, your media people are nice people. Their production, their, their intelligence for production is good. Hallelujah. Now, as a member of this church, you are happy. But were you the one who did that work? No. But you can share in your glory, in the glory of the, you know, the commendation. Why? Because of the presence of gifted men. Perhaps the men who did this now are nameless, faceless, somewhere doing their work. Gifted people are powerful. The greatest corporations on earth thrive well because they take out time to invest in bringing together the best minds. Gifted people are a blessing. Gifted people are a blessing. When God brings gifted people to your life spiritually, corporately, don't throw them away. Appreciate them. Gifted people are powerful. You don't appreciate your expert driver till you sit to be driven by one who doesn't know what he's doing. And may God help you that you don't know the scriptures that guarantee long life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 